Hey everyone and welcome to the short tutorial where I'll be showing you how to set up GitHub and Unity so you can help with the terrain painting process for field warning uh, as I discussed in the previous devlog. So you'll need a GitHub desktop app to be able to push your commits to our branches and you also need to set up Unity before you can actually get to painting the terrains. So it's really simple uh, for GitHub all you need to do is just download the desktop app I'll put all the relevant links in the description but basically you just click this big purple button and just follow the installation process it's pretty simple and then you need to set up an account as well that you will need to um, basically link with our developer application form if you go to the uh, discord here uh, this is more just for for me to keep track of things uh, in an easier way so um, your github profile is the most important thing here uh, we have a mandatory trial, but like, you can fiddle out whatever you want here. It's um, it's not really um, that crucial, and uh, just apply for a tester, because for the time being, we don't have a map designer role, but not that it matters, and here you can just fill. I'll probably tweak this before the video goes up, so you might see some extra roles here. Um, but the yeah, so your GitHub profile, uh, just submit it here so that I can give you permissions, so you're able to push your changes to the to the master branch basically so once you have your github app set up and installed and your account ready you need to download the project basically to your local PC so what you do is you just grab this URL here from the open source repository we have and you go to the github um, app here and you just go to clone repository you go to URL you add your local path to uh, wherever it's gonna be and you just drop the the link here and then you just hit clone and it's that simple basically so once you've downloaded the project to your local drive you need to also set up unity and the correct version matters a lot so we're using this LTS release 2019.4.0 it's very important that it's the version from the 9th of June and that's I'm gonna put the the link as well it is and uh, yeah so any of these other versions will just lead to some issues um, when you're committing so make sure you are on the right version which is this one right here LTS 2019.4.0 it's very important uh, the setup is pretty simple you just download it and you just run the installer there's not much to talk about regarding that so once you have your unity um, installed and you you can uh, double click unity and uh, open the project that you downloaded using the github desktop app this is the first thing you'll see it's just going to be an empty scene with all the assets of the project here on the left side so unity is pretty simple to use it's a very intuitive engine um, what you just need to do for this specific task is to navigate to scenes and then go to maps go to 1v1 map and uh, double click this cube looking thing and now you are basically open the map that uh, was shown off in the devlog yeah so what we need of you is just uh, some help in fleshing out the map fully uh, and painting out these terrains and extra details such as the town so I'll just be showing a quick example now of how exactly the process works it's really really simple there's, there's not much um, thought behind it as well so um, we have like the hierarchy window here set up and you don't have to touch anything in this tab except in the map uh, aspect and um, by default these will all be closed I think and you can open the drop down or you can just directly click on the terrain in the inspector and um, it is going to tell you which object is selected here on the left side so in the terrain itself let me just close this real quick because I don't I could use the extra space yeah so in the terrain editor itself there are a few settings which you don't really care about so first is the neighboring terrains which you don't have to touch at all uh, the only one you're interested in is the paint terrain in the paint terrain tab there's a uh, like a drop down menu um, for several different uh, types of painting um, the other ones are mostly regarding the height map which we're not really interested in the only thing you need is to go to the paint texture tab here so once you're in the paint texture tab 
there's a few settings here for the brushes. So for the farms specifically, I like to use this second brush here because this one uh, has kind of jagged edges and uh, it doesn't help with like the corners a lot. So this one kind of smooths that out a bit and I prefer using this one for the farms uh, as opposed to something like this that you could we could use in different cases which I'll show later. So uh, we're going to select this brush and then scrolling down a bit more we have a brush strength. So this basically is the opacity of the brush, uh, like how much uh, one stroke is going to uh, fill out as a layer. So um, for painting the farms, you can keep this at about one. And then brush size by uh, like the one is the default. And in some cases, it might be a bit too much. So you can tweak this. I usually like to go 0.3 to get these kind of corners, right? But I'll be demonstrating that later a bit. Uh, rotation is basically just concerning the brush that you selected here, but considering we're using a uniform brush, we don't care about rotation. And uh, spacing, just keep that at zero. Uh, target strength is also like the maximum strength that um, is going to be applied. So this will be useful in a later case that I'll show as well. Okay, so all you need to do knowing that is just uh, open this layers tab and here is the eight layers that we use to fill out the map with details so um, these first four you don't have to really think about them the only ones you're interested in is uh, farm one to farm four um, and so basically how the map currently works is if I open the decals and I disable this image you see um, this is all grass for now and these are the only ones which are farms. And this is the image that I use to basically make the map look a bit better from a far out zoom, but also to give the map a more realistic feel uh, when it comes to painting out these details. Because um, German fields are very, very unique in the way that they're shaped. So following an outline is just makes the process easier, I find. Um, so yeah, all you have to do is just outline the image uh, as shown in this kind of area as an example. So to do that, um, yeah, just click on the terrain, go to the drop down, and just try to match the color. So if we look at this area, we kind of see, okay, so this should be kind of brownish. So you can select this color, and we just start painting. It's pretty simple. Um, just follow the outline as it's shown. And uh, these kind of town details, you try to leave them out because then we'll be placing buildings later on. So here's the issue that we're running into that I specified earlier with the brush size. So to get these corners to look a bit more realistic, I just go back to my brush size, I go 0 0.3, and then just fill out those corners like this. And uh, it doesn't have to be entirely perfect because we're making a strategy game. so. Um, yeah, don't spend way too much time just on one part where it doesn't matter uh, or it won't be seen too much. But at least like try to generally fill the outline and make sure that it, it looks good from uh, like the level of zoom that you would normally play, which is something like this. Um, so yeah, that's basically the entire process in terms of, of this step. So here I'll just show a bit more like how my... Uh, my workflow is again I'll follow this one just matching the colors and it's kind of important so that the blending from afar works well because you have two different types of colors actually it might in some cases it might not even be a, a bad idea because then you get more variety by blending different colors together so um, it's it's up to you like I'm, I'm gonna let you guys um, be in charge of this process while I do some more important tasks that are kind of vital to the project. Okay, so that's basically how this step works and it just has to be repeated for the entire map, which is a lot, which is why I need help. Um, but if we turn off the decal now, you'll notice this looks bland and let's also turn off the, the noise decals. So this looks bland and very tiling and just not, not uh, acceptable especially for a modern standard. So uh, there's some tricks I do to kind of help this uh, this step look a bit 
uh, more varied and intricate. Uh, I basically grabbed these kind of noise brushes. I like this one a lot because it's got a lot of spaced out kind of things in between. And uh, we can set a bigger brush size for this one. Like let's set it to four or something. Oh, no, it's a bit too much. Let's set it to two. And then I'll set the brush strength to, actually let's set it to one. And maybe the target strength, we can set it to a maximum of three or something. And then I'll just grab the grass and I'll just gently click a few times to uh, basically give it some distinct patterns here and there like so and then we can also do some tricks in a different way like let's grab this brush let's set a smaller target strength of um, sorry a, a smaller size of three and then let's grab the dirt and I just make some lines like so and uh, just basically make this area a bit more varied and again, uh, the extent of which you want to do this is up to you. Like, I don't expect it to be an insane amount of detail. But you see, it just helps to, to break it up. Uh, and it makes it more realistic in, in a way. Because, yeah, especially here in some areas, it's lacking. So um, you can also go back and kind of edit this. Um, add some more variety to, to places like that. Um, just make them more interesting to look at, basically because uh, we're limited by the terrain shader as it is currently. Um, that will be fixed in the future with Unity releasing some updates. But for now, uh, this is how we can do it. And even when they release it, this is still the way that I would make maps in the future. Although we are going to be integrating some sort of semi-procedural generation through splat maps, uh, sorry, splat maps and uh, terrain vegetation spawners, but that will come in a future update video, so don't worry about it now. So I'm just going to put these noises back so that everything looks interesting again. And basically that's the entire process. There's not much to it. Uh, you just repeat this for every single farm that you can see. And of course you can take liberty because in some cases the, the roads will not match the image because uh, I didn't want to add too many checkpoints to the road system. Um, for fear of performance issues, although that's kind of not proven that there would be, so it was just something that uh, I did in advance for no reason. Um, and also, if you want to add some directional uh, decals as well, uh, by default these gizmos will be activated. I disable it so that I don't get this extra shit on my screen, but it might be useful. So uh, this is how we handle these um, kind of extra details. I'm going to turn these off again just to demonstrate that so this is yeah if we select this one if I move it it's basically just an image that we place on this thing so what you can do is just duplicate this by doing control D or if you go right click you can also duplicate and you get a new one and then um, you can change its it's a uh, size here in the in the size channel so if we increase the x you see what happens we increase the y you see what happens and uh, there's no point in increasing the z value because um, the way decals work they hit a mesh and they project onto its surface so what you can do is add some directionals where you see fit uh, don't make too many decals because there is a limit to the amount of decals uh, a map can have um, but in some areas where you feel like it could use a bit of extra detail that's what you can do and of course these are limited in the fact that they are uh, only applied in a box shape so for some places like this it's gonna go overboard so uh, make sure you only use it where it makes sense um, yeah that that's it regarding the terrain painting and if you also want uh, you can help out in placing uh, towns where appropriate so that's pretty easy when you go to the project um, I'm going to close this. You go to the buildings subfolder and here are all the folders for uh, each specific building we have. Uh, currently the system isn't very map, fr map maker friendly I'll admit because I need to make a global prefab folder that uh, has all the buildings in it. But basically how it works is you pick what kind of building you want to place and uh, let's demonstrate that by like making this. So um, 
here we see the outline of the Google Earth image, what kind of town we could place there. So I'm just going to go to the farm one, go to warehouse. And it's very important that you don't go to mesh. You go to prefab. Uh, extremely important uh, that you use the prefab. And then you just drag it, drop it on the map where you want. You position it like this. And then it, by default, it's going to be in the hierarchy here. Make sure that you move it into the uh, environment, towns, category here in the hierarchy. is very important under the map. Um, this has to do with, um, yeah, and then just put it in buildings, of course. This has to do with the way that uh, light uh, baking works later so that we can control our all objects. Uh, at once so yeah this that's how it works uh, you can just then rotate them so that uh, E is the rotate tool W is the move tool and R is the scale tool although I wouldn't recommend you scale up the objects and that's basically it then you can just browse through this and then see what kind of house you like go to prefab maybe drag it here put it here and again just then place it down in buildings and close this right so I'm just gonna delete this for now and now I'll show you after you've done your work how you can push it to the re repository so it's very important that uh, the map doesn't have this asterisk thing which means there are unsaved changes to it so you just click these three dots and you go save scene and now it's gone and now We'll just go back to our GitHub desktop app. And um, now, yeah, once you've set up the project and you've cloned it, um, there's going to be, this is where you write your change name. So let's say uh, Terrain Paint Tutorial. And then we commit it. And these are the changed files that you have uh, on your local machine. And now they're committed. So by default, you'll be on master branch. That's fine. Uh, we don't have to make branches for this. Um, it's just going to complicate things. And um, I don't want to confuse you guys with technicalities. And once you've committed, all you do is push. And it's going to take a while, depending on how much you've changed. And when it, once it's done, we're going to get a notification on, uh, on Discord. And also, if you go to history, you'll see that your your commit was successfully pushed to our master branch. And uh, yeah, so if we go back to Discord, we go to our repo updates channel, which is really useful. You see, you have a successful commit. So that's all you really need to do. It's that simple of a process. It's just repeating the same thing over and over again until we fill out the whole map. And this is only a temporary method of making maps until uh, I set up everything we need to make the maps in a semi-procedural fashion that will just speed up the process entirely. Um, but we don't have all the tools necessary yet. So just for this one demo we're planning to do, uh, this will suffice. We're hand painting just one map and uh, never again <laughs> because it's uh, too much of a tedious process and it's really inefficient. And um, it's also really boring. But I mean, maybe for some of you, this will be relaxing because it's literally just a coloring book. And uh, you, you're helping out the project a lot by, by doing this. So yeah, um, follow the example as I've placed here. And uh, make sure that it at least meet, meets uh, this kind of a standard with what you've done. And don't be afraid of fucking something up when you push because we can easily revert a commit. So. Yeah, that's all you guys need. Uh, if you have questions, you can reach me on Discord at any time. I'm always happy to help. So if you um, want something clarified further on, or you are stuck somewhere, or you, uh, you're you not really sure about how certain things work, or you even want to uh, go even further and help out in different areas, um, yeah, again, just write me a message either on the main channels of Field Warning. So we have several here. That you can talk into or just send me a, a message um, in via DM so this is my my discord handle uh, either works for me and yeah so thank you very much to those who who wish to help with this uh, you're really really helping us um, push this a bit further so I'll see you guys in the next one